In this video, we're going to talk about the gate pattern. The gate pattern can help you find where and what row or column a number goes in, and, and sometimes it can also help you find uh, where that number goes, you, so you can solve that number. Uh, that'll make a little more sense as I go along. You can go to sudokuprimer.com and uh, in the pattern section uh, there's a write-up about the gate pattern and how it works. So you can go there and uh, get more information about the gate pattern. This is puzzle number 80 from Sudoku to Go volume 115 by Soap Opera Digest. As I go along I'm going to fill in numbers and if they're pretty obvious where those numbers, why those numbers go there, I'm not going to explain it. I'll just fill them in. But if you have a question about how I got a specific number, please leave a comment and I, I can try and answer your questions. Alright, well the gate pattern is, and you can see a gate pattern anytime you see two numbers in the same row or the same column in a box. In this example there's a 7 and a 3 and there's an empty cell in, the, in between them. And this is what I call the gate. Now you can also have a situation like this row here where you have two numbers together with an empty cell next to them. So the gate doesn't have to be in between the numbers this can also be used as a gate. The way you use a gate pattern is you look at the column or the row that goes through the gate, in this case column 8 here, and you look at any numbers that are outside of the, this box and then um, when you see numbers that aren't already in the box that go through that gate, you can see if there that same number is in either of these two rows, corresponding rows in this section. For example, we've got a 5 here, so the 5 can't go anywhere in this column because there's already a 5 in there, but a 5 could go here, 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 or here. If these were blank, then the 5 could go in any of these four places. And then you look for a 5 in this row or this row. If you see a 5 in one of these two rows, then you know which row the 5 goes in in the box that has the gate in it. In this example, we don't have uh, 5s here. And we already have a 2 in this box, so we can't use the 2 to find any, any numbers here or any 2s. Okay. Let's look at this example here, this 1, 8 here with the gate here. There's a there's only one number outside this box um, in column 7 that we can look at, but this 4 goes through the gate, so we know the 4 can't fit in any of these cells in this column, so the 4 has to be here or here, and in this case we've got a 4 here, so we know the 4 goes there. Now, of course, if this 3 weren't here, we could possibly have a 4 here and we couldn't solve it yet. And quite often that's the case with the, with the gate pattern. But you would know that the 4 goes in this, this row, in this box here. Alright, let's look at this gate right here. We have a 4 and a 6 here with an empty cell in the middle. We know there's a 4 in here already, um, so we can't do anything with that. We've got an 8 and a 5. And let's look at the 8. We've got an 8 that goes through there, so the 8 can be here, 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 or here. We've got an 8 here already, so we know the 8 goes here. And therefore, we also know that the 8 goes in one of these two boxes. So the 8 goes one of these two boxes and one of these two boxes. Let's look at the 5. Well, the only 5 in this section is the same row as the gate, so the 5 doesn't help us here. Let's look over here. Let's look at this gate right here. 
we've got an 8 and a 4 here. We've got a 7 and a 9 outside of the box in the gate column. And we've got a 7 and a 9 here. So we know these are 7 and 9 twins and we can solve them. Now let's um, let's look at this box right here. And it, uh, by the way, this is a good example of, of how the gate pattern helped us find these two numbers. Okay. Let's look at this box right here and just see if we can. Yeah, we've got a five and a six, so we got five six twins here, and we can solve those. And then we can, there's one and two left. We can solve those. All right, now let's look at this gate right here one more time. We had an eight and a five. We know one of these is an eight, but now we put a five here. So we know we have five eight twins here now. Now a five can only go here. So we've got ghost fives here. So we know that that's a five right there. Eight here. So this gate helped us, but didn't help us completely until we got this five here. Before we put this five, place this five here, we only knew that eights and eight would go in this row in one of these two cells. All right, let's look at this row. Let's fill, we'll fill in a few more uh, numbers here. Look at this row right here. What are we missing? One, three, seven, nine. One, three, seven, nine. One, three, nine. One, three, seven. And one, three, seven, nine. So that's a nine right there. And right here we had seven, nine, because of these one threes here. So we know that's a seven. It's got the nine already. All right, we got fours here and eights here, so we know these are four eight twins. We can solve those. Got a nine here and a nine here. One of these is a nine. We got ghost nines here, so we know that's a nine. All right, now what do we have left in here in this column? Four, four, eight, nine. There's a four and a nine there, so that's an eight. And so we can solve those. Okay, we're missing. Five and six here, we can solve those. Let's see if we can solve these. One, three, one, three, nine. So that's a nine, three, one. Here we've got one, seven. One seven, we can solve those. Okay, let's see. We know uh, now that we've finished this, we know what these two numbers are. Therefore, we know what these two numbers are. Three, six, three and six there. So these are one, five. 1 and 5 and 3 and 6. Okay, so let's see if we can finish this row. Well, we can't solve these two, but we might be able to find these now that we know these are twins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. So 6 and 8, we can solve those. Now um, let's 
look, see we've got a gate pattern here with this empty cell. We've got a gate pattern here with this empty cell. Now these are in um, two numbers in a column rather than in a row. Everything that I showed you earlier was, was gates in, a, in, a, in rows rather than in columns. So let's see if we can do anything with this. We got seven, nine, they're already in the box. Five, eight, one. There's an eight in this box already, so we can look at the five and the one. There are no fives or ones here, so they can't really help us with the gate, but we do know that these are one five twins here. I wanted to illustrate the, the fact that this is a gate, um, even though we already know where the, that these are one fives. Now, if we had a five or a one in this in the in one of these columns, we we could solve those, of course, and that's what you're looking for when you're looking at a gate. Okay, we have the same thing here. We've got a gate here. Eight, nine, five. We've got nine and five already, so the eight. One of these, there's no eights here. And there's a three, seven, six. There's a six here already in that box. Three and seven. Okay, so these are examples of gates in columns rather than in rows, although in both cases we couldn't find any numbers that will help us, you know, along the along the columns that will help us identify which row, or I mean which column a specific number goes in. But I wanted to illustrate, you know, that gates go in rows or columns. Okay, so we got one five there. What do we have here? We've got, uh, well, we've got a six here, so we can solve the three and six there. Now let's look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are two, three, and four. We can't solve those. Let's see, we've got a three there. And uh, seven, eight twins there. We can solve those. And what do we have here? One, two, four. This is these are two four twins here. Just can't solve any of these yet. Oh wait, now now that we have the three here, we can. These are two three fours right here. So that's a two. That's a. Four because of the two four twins. That's a two and that's a three. And then we got one four there. So now we can solve those two. All right. Let's look at this column right here, or these three right here. One, two, three, six. Two, three, and six. So that's a six. We can't solve the two threes yet. Let's see if we can solve this here. One, seven, one and seven. We can solve that, and therefore we can solve our one five twins there. Well, we can also solve our one five twins here. Now we've got two, three. Five, nine, right there. We can solve those. Got two threes there. Six sevens there that we can solve. Let's see, two, six, two six there we can solve. And with our two there, we can solve our two threes here. Three, five, three and five left there. And that's it. So that's how you use the gate pattern to help you find either solve numbers or at least find which row or column a number goes in.
when you have numbers that are in the same column as a gate or the same row as a gate, you can look at those and see where those numbers can fit in that box where the gate is if that same number is in one of the co corresponding rows and columns. Um, well, thanks for watching. I hope that helps. And again, uh, go to sudokuprimer.com and look, at, look up patterns and then find the gate pattern and that that'll probably help you find um, or help you understand the gate pattern a little better. I'll see you again next time.